Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here. Got too many users at work surfing porn and infecting workstations? Let's block that shiznit. This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Welcome to episode 24 of Tech Shop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, aka twitter.com slash Pablo. And today, we're going to look at web filtering. We all have those users that like to get a little freaky at work and surf the porn. With the exception of offending people in the workplace and having your company getting a potential lawsuit, the only other real threat to having people surfing porn is the malware that gets installed on users' machines after they visit those sites. It's sort of like a virtual STD that way. Even more common, we have users that like to spend all day updating their Facebook pages or sending out tweets on Twitter. And if you are one of those people, make sure you follow Tech Shop. Finally, we have those that like to do all their online shopping at work. Any one of the previously mentioned scenarios lowers productivity in the workplace or can be a potential threat to your network. I have a tool that is easy to set up that can fix a lot of these issues. It even works great at home to keep your kids safe and to block known malicious sites. I'm talking about web filtering using OpenDNS. Before I get too involved though, I'm going to break for the weekly news brief. This week's news brief is brought to you by Gamefly. Have games delivered to your house, keep them as long as you want with no late fees. When you're done, send them back. There's even an option to purchase the game you have just rented if you really like it, and they will send you the packaging. Sign up for your no-risk free trial today. Just visit deals.techshop.com and click on the Gamefly banner. In response to an FBI statement earlier this year saying that the United States is not winning the hacking war, which was referring to the FBI's inability to keep up with cyber threats using traditional methods. A defense analyst at the Naval Postgraduate School named John Arquila came up with a solution. Instead of trying to put U.S. hackers in jail, why not hire them? Arquila believes that the FBI can work with hackers to wage war against online terrorists as well as other enemies of the United States. You can read more about Arquila's ideas at the link below. Yahoo announced their new CEO, Longtime Google executive Marissa Mayer started working as the CEO of former rival Yahoo and took over for the interim CEO Ross Levinson. Having Mayer step in comes not too long after Yahoo hired Scott Thompson, the mind behind eBay's PayPal, back in January, and then they turned around and gave him the boot a few months later in May. Microsoft's Eric Dewar has said that around 20% of Microsoft account logins can be found on lists of compromised credentials stemming from recently publicized security breaches from Yahoo and LinkedIn. Dewar says that the reason is because many people reuse passwords. For example, the password you use to access Facebook is probably the same password you use to access your home computer. News for the weekly news brief is taken right from our Tech Shop Daily Paper Lead page available at news.techchop.com. Don't forget that you can sponsor your own news brief for only $10 by clicking the donate button in the sidebar at techchop.com. Got something to say? We'll be your 30-second podium for only $10. Tech Chop! So in the first part of the show, I talked about web filtering for protecting your network and how easy it is to set up. There are a number of these types of products on the market designed for business that can seriously cost an arm and a leg. I know firsthand because my first IT job was at a little company called WebSense. If you haven't heard of it, they're probably one of the biggest names in web filtering. In fact, their entire company was built around that model. What if you don't want anything so complicated and most importantly, something that doesn't cost any money? Let me introduce you to OpenDNS. I've been using OpenDNS for a few years at my last three companies. What? So I job hopped a bit. Sue me. It works out really well, plus you don't have to keep it updated. What I mean by that is that my first company where I first used OpenDNS, we would filter out restricted sites using keywords and manually adding addresses to the firewall. It was impossible to keep on top of. OpenDNS has a database of sites based on different categories. 
you don't want people to visit social media sites like Facebook or Twitter, you can block all of social networking and be done with it. If a new social networking site pops up, it'll block it too, automatically. Now, our firewall had that capability too, but it was a subscription service that we had to pay for. If you didn't want to pay, you had to do things manually, like we did. No thanks. OpenDNS also has a paid version, but I haven't felt the need to upgrade as the free version works perfectly for me and for my last few organizations. Setting up OpenDNS is a snap too, and I'll show you how to do it right after this. During the summer, it seems like everyone is out of the office, working remotely, going on vacation, pretty much any excuse they can muster to stay the hell out of the office. Welcome to the loneliest room during the summer, the meeting room. This is yet another reason that we at TechShop recommend GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It allows you to meet face-to-face -face with your work-avoiding colleagues, no matter where they are. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, it just takes a webcam and a click to collaborate in group HD video. iPad users can even join in the meeting with the free GoToMeeting app. You can see your attendees eye to eye while collaborating on documents in real time. You'll feel instantly connected, even if they're in Los Angeles and you're off soaking up the rays in Tahiti. Not to mention how easy it is to use GoToMeeting. As a tech guy, I think I can safely say that a monkey can figure out this program. You're smarter than a monkey, right? I mean, you are watching my show. At my company, we use GoToMeeting all the time and we love it you need to start using it too. Tech Shop viewers can try GoToMeeting free for 30 days if they use the promo code PODCAST. Don't wait for this special offer. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. Be sure to use the promo code PODCAST so they know that Tech Shop sent you. In the last segment, I talked about using OpenDNS as a free method to filter the web for your users, or even perhaps to filter the web for your kids at home. Either way, it's free, right? I, for one, use it not only at the office, but at home as well. My kids are still too little to browse to naughty sites, so I'm not really using it for filtering that stuff out. What I use it for is filtering out no malicious sites and spyware. Yeah, it can do that too. Great. So how do you set it up? Super easy. Once you have signed up for your free account, if you're managing a company network, what you need to do is, on your internal DNS servers, change the IP address of your DNS forward lookup servers to point to OpenDNS instead of whatever you have in there. Most likely, what you have in there are the DNS servers that your ISP gave you. The IP addresses for OpenDNS are 208.67.222.222 and 208.67.220.220. Don't worry, you don't have to remember that now because they have those IP addresses listed on every page of their website. OpenDNS bases its filtering off of the public IP address of your DNS inquiries. Most users in an office share one public IP for all outbound internet connections. So when users' DNS queries get forwarded to OpenDNS, it checks the policy rules based on your IP, and either gives you the correct IP address, or it redirects you to a block page. Super simple. If you don't have a DNS server and your computers look directly to your ISP's DNS servers for web surfing, You'll just have to change that to use OpenDNS servers instead. For instance, you may have this type of setup if your firewall handles all of your DHCP addressing and hands out its own address as the DNS server. Once your external DNS lookups are pointing at OpenDNS, you're good to go. A few things you should keep in mind though is with a free account, there's very limited reporting functionality. For instance, you can't run a monthly report to see who's been visiting uPorn or something. If you need that, OpenDNS might not be right for you. Also, with the free version, it's ad supported. If you don't want ads, you might want to upgrade to OpenDNS Enterprise. Finally, OpenDNS is pretty easy to bypass. All you have to do is change the DNS IP address on your computer to point to a non-OpenDNS DNS server. For instance, you can statically set up your computer to use 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 for its DNS. And then you can browse to any site you want. For executives and VIPs who don't want to be filtered, I point them to a couple of our internal DNS servers that have forward lookups set to DNS servers other than OpenDNS. That way they can still access domain resources, but not be filtered. All in all, OpenDNS is a free and easy solution for your web filtering needs. Setup is super simple, and it will certainly keep the average user in line. That's all I have for this episode. Are you using OpenDNS in your environment? Like it? Hate it? Let us know what you think about it in the comments. 
Likewise, if you have any questions about OpenDNS, sound off in the comments for that as well, or hit us up on our Facebook page. Don't forget to like, fave, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time right here on Tech Shop.